Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now, our second conversation will be on fuel subsidy. The federal government says it will cater for fuel subsidy uh, in 2022 for the first six months. And afterwards, there's going to be a total deregulation of the downstream oil and gas sector. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about now. The big question will be, can we survive? Can Nigerians survive six months uh, without the subsidy. We do have Nika Gule on standby who would be helping us understand the dynamics of this conversation. Good morning, Mr. Nika Gule. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. All right, so let's go straight to the crux of the matter. What do you, this is not the first time we're having this conversation. Uh, what are your thoughts? Fuel subsidy removal uh, for the first six months of 2022 and deregulation of the downstream oil and gas sector. Okay, thank you very much. My first thought is the current government led by President Muhammad Buhari in their campaign committee in the 20 general elections they categorically told all Nigerians that they were going to do away with fuel subsidy. They actually called it a criminal enterprise. And they were right. It is, however, unfortunate that this government is now trying to work several years in office. They have not done anything with the fuel subsidy. Neither have they repaired the infanteries which is the cost of the fuel subsidy. Last week, I was speaking with you on the exchange rate, and I was talking about the Nigerian official aid crisis. And then they spent all their time in office, four years, eight years, trying to address or deal with this crisis. And this is one of them. We're talking about fuel subsidy because we have four refineries, with a combined refining capacity of 450,000 barrels of crude oil per day. It is way more than Nigeria's requirement for petroleum products. If the government had break down in their first one year or two years in Oakley, and they did something about the refineries, either by leaving them out by actually selling them out for investors to bring in their money, repair the refinery, and they start refining locally our petroleum products. We will be talking about this activity today. The second thought I have is that the government has said in 2022 they will pay subsidies for the first six months and then there will be total deregulation of the downstream sector. And I say, it is not going to happen. Why do I say so? I say so because the government has been thinking since the committee of this every year that they were going to deregulate the downstream sector, not pay any subsidy. Remember very well, in 2020, this government actually told us, they looked us in the face and they said fuel subsidy has now been stopped. This is what they said. And then the Minister of Petroleum, a Minister of State, the Petroleum himself, the Minister Silva, tell us that the, 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 the PPRA and the and the and the PEF, that is Petroleum Equalization Fund, and the Petroleum Product Pricing and Regulatory Agency, the two government agencies that are supervising each of these, that were scrapped. A minister of state of petroleum with Nigerians in the face and say no more subsidies to switch up to use of the day. Key for them to continue to face use of the day. So I don't believe them, I don't trust them. And I know that in 2022 and 2023, fuel subsidy will be with us. Yeah, now, let me answer way. the second part of your question. Do not say that if fuel subsidy, if the downstream sector is 
is regulated, that is the Nigerian economy going to survive? And my answer is a capital yes. A capital yes because the petroleum product that the productive sector of the economy is using is already deregulated. The diesel that is used by mass market vehicles, used in generators in factories, is already deregulated. Kerosene that is used by the poor is already deregulated. In fact, any time I pass by a petrol station and I look at their prices displayed on the board, I keep pain and shame to be a Nigerian. Because on that board, you will see PMS, which is petrol, 165. Then you will see diesel, 300 or something. And you will see kerosene, 300 or something. You are asking yourself, what sort of country is this? What sort of country that will be wealthy from the poor to pay the rich? And why do I say so? The people who are using petrol, they are the big men. Go to any estate, any estate in Nigeria where big men live. You will see three, four, five, six, sometimes more than that, a number of cars outside their residence. They are the ones consuming petrol. The masses, when they are leaving mainland, going to Ireland, to what? They are going into Poland and other buses. These buses are using diesel. So this whole thing about talking about Nigeria's economy not surviving, it is actually the big men that we now have to pay the right price for the fuel that they are using in their cars. And let me tell you one thing. Anytime we are talking about subsidies, the government will say, oh, anytime we bring in people and subsidize it, people take it across the border. In neighboring countries where petrol is sold at the market rate. Ask yourself, who are our neighbors? Our neighbors are Benin, Chad, Cameroon. They are small economies. Yet economy. they are paying the market price for petrol oh. and they are surviving. So, how much more Nigeria, a big economy? We pay market price of control and we not survive. Mr. Gole, Mr. Gole, can you hold on? And I don't. Yeah, Mr. Gole, I, I want to. I want you to speak on um, what the you know if this is true and and the Nigerian government actually goes you know ahead with this. Um, what would uh, this mean for Nigerians? You know, with regards to the price of petrol, um, and also um, are these things you know being spoken about with you know expectations that the Dangote refinery will be ready in 2022, as it has been projected. Um, so, put okay, uh, the response the, to that. Remember the also... Line, the lines need to be, not to be clear. So, let me understand, let me say the question that I understand it. Yep. You say this few talks is in blue, what it will mean for Nigeria? And yes, then, with regards... The Dangote refinery. Yes, the price right. of petrol for Nigerians and, uh, of course, the Dangote refinery. Okay, so... So if you subsidy is removed today, if this government stomachs courage to remove your subsidy, what it is going to mean for Nigerians is that about two to three trillion naira that is meant into this sector that is called your subsidy with the taste. And government will divert that money to education to health care, to infrastructure, to security, to those things that Nigerians are suffering from on a daily basis. There is actually no point to subsidize petrol for five, six, twenty cars that are a big men who can pay for their own petrol. Yeah. No, no, no. They are going to, to say, oh, if we remove you from the of the we remove you to be on diesel, which is the petrol of the, the fuel that is being used in the productive economy. And there is no amalgam. Yeah, Mr. Gole, what, what I'm asking, 
uh, we're, we're out of time actually, but what I'm asking is, will Nigerians be able to afford petrol if subsidy is taken out? You know, it's currently 162 to 165. If we go ahead and take out subsidy, um, what are the chances of, you know, an increased price of petrol for Nigerians, for the average Nigerian? And is there a possibility that Dangote Refinery we will actually make a change and make this possible? Oh, okay, fine. I hear you even clearer now. Let, let me tell you something. I don't know the number of cars that are in Nigeria. But let us assume there are 10 million. If there are 10 million cars in Nigeria that consume petrol, I can assure you that 90.9, that is 9,900,000 of those cars, be owned by big men. People who are anywhere, who are only need petrol acts, people are going to be able to get an act. Those are the people who are going to be you know, so they should be able to pay for their petrol. In the United Kingdom, where I live, the state actually made me duty on every liter of petrol that is sold. They use that money to repair the road, for provide public transportation, for the market, and all of that. So they are letting the big way to pay. So the government will use that money to provide for the market. In the universe, Market money made for the markets, subsidizing the large pie, big boom. But the time, people put 400 naira a liter. You will hardly see people own more than two cars. We throw in your only multiple number of cars to stop. Oh. Going to Dangote Refinery. Sorry? All right, um, what was I going to say? Uh, well, you know, it's, 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 it's a really, really. Um, important conversation, you know, and for, with regards to your point on uh, persons having more than two cars and more than three cars, um, we must also remember the failure of the public transportation system, um, you know, in this in this uh, you know discussion. But um, unfortunately, we would have to reschedule and talk about this um, on a later date um, because we're out of time. But thank you very much, Nika Gule. Um, your perspective is always very interesting, and we thank you for joining us um, on the breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. I have a nice day. You too, sir. And this is where we will be wrapping up. Um, I'm a little under the weather, uh, to be honest. Um, but if you miss out on any of these conversations, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Boko. Do have a great day.